This one's gonna hit me hard for sure. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Sean Clen Shadow Productions. Now this one's going to be very, very kind of close to home and deep in my heart about this one because this one is something that I'm going through myself as far as for an indigenous person in the modern day. For those of you out there who haven't seen uh, my latest video, Soul Sovereignty, go check that out before you watch this one because uh, I'm going to be talking about that whole kind of narrative I was going with with that video and the teachings and struggles of a traditional native in a modern day setting. Oh, welcome back. If you've watched that and haven't watched it and, or already seen it and you're watching this one, hello. So this one's going to be very, very deep and close to home with me because uh, this is something that I'm going through right now as far as for myself and trying to find the balance of you know, modern day leave, living and trying to live a traditional life as well. Now, what do I mean by the differences of living a traditional modern day life? Aren't they the same? You know, it's 2024, you know, everything should be, you know, everyone should be living the same. And no, I'm sorry, it's not, <laughs> it's not the case. Living on the reservation, for those of you out there who don't really know, it's very, very, it's, it's kind of like a complete 180 as far as for how you live in the modern day. You know, the mindset that you have of when you live in the reservation to where you live in the modern day cities, I guess you can say, is completely different. You know, when I go home or whenever you live on the reservation, there is a mindset that you have that you are living in your ancestors' footsteps, literally, quite literally. You know, your people have been there for so long. You know, when you live there and you walk around and everything, you it's it's very beautiful. You know, you feel at home, you feel safe, you feel protected from all the prayers and ceremonies that your ancestors have put forth for you. And you're around your elders, you're around your cousins, your aunties, uncles, you know, everybody. And a lot of them do speak your lang native language fluently to you every day. And it's it's beautiful to be able to hear those languages. It's beautiful to be able to hear those prayers and those songs on a daily basis. And whenever you go to the city, you don't hear those no more. You know, you don't you don't hear those those songs or you don't feel like it's your home. You're not walking on the same footsteps. You don't have that protection that you have of when you live, when you're on the reservation. Now, you know, when you come to the modern day living, you know, the mindset's very different. The mindset over on the reservation is you get up, you know, you pray with the morning star before the sun comes up. And whenever you're done with that prayer, that's when you can go ahead and get started with your day. You know, make breakfast, you know, go let it do your daily chores, you know, go let out the animals to graze. You know go chop some wood or go do something you know there's always something to do on the reservation and so when you go do that you know you come to the modern day living you know you get up before the sun and you go to work and all that stuff but if the thing that's kind of different is the mindset of where you are that day the mindset of okay so i need to worry about my job i need to worry about you know all these other things that really don't pertain to me you know, your job that you work at is to go and make somebody else rich, you know, instead of yourself, you know, you're profiting their company or you're doing, you know, you're in traffic. Oh, I got to obey these city laws or all these other things. And I got to say, I got to pray with tobacco. And there's a lot of places out here that have kicked me out because I cannot smoke tobacco in certain areas. And that's bullshit reservation you can have a prayer anywhere you want and i come to this city and they tell me hey shh, go on you can't have that smoke here that's some bullshit and that needs to change we need to have designated prayer areas for in us indigenous people to pray oh i'll say that right now just kidding yeah i guess you can see i've, I've kind of dealt with some stuff in the city here too but yeah so it's 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 pretty mind-boggling to be able to try to live have that traditional mindset but be in an environment to where that doesn't fit it's like a puzzle piece that doesn't fit inside of the, the whole piece and artwork that you're trying to do. And that's honestly how I feel for me is, you know, you, the mindset you have is different from everybody else. You know, everybody is so kind of tunnel visioned on their everyday life. They're on a, they're on a routine every single day. They're like worker bees. They do all these different things. 
when you're taught to open yourself up in in our traditional ways to look around to be observant you know to pray about certain things you witness something pray about it you know all these different things but you have these high buildings you know you don't have grass or dirt it's artificial stuff you know you have concrete you have paved roads and everything and you know it's it's something that's a struggle and something that like i'm pretty sure a lot of you people out there are thinking is it's like well why don't you just go back why don't you just go live on the reservation again i could but you know there's a there's a certain thing you got to do think about out there call the paycheck and how you get it and that's the thing is like back in the day you didn't have to really worry about paychecks you just had to worry about survival you know make sure you have enough sheep cattle horses you know to be able to uh, have enough food to be able to farm your own food and to trade with your neighbors and go to town if you need to and all that and be able to barter with that you know you can be able to sell rugs jewelry or other different things to be able to trade and all that but in today's modern day if you were to try to get a job it's very very hot in reservation and for those of you out there who I don't, and i'm just speaking on the navajo nation for those of you out there who are on different reservations reserves wherever you are you know your homelands let me know in the comments what your living situation is on your reservations because for us we have the biggest reservation as far as for the united states but honestly it's very very tough for us and i know we don't have it the hardest i know that i know there's other reservations that have it worse but when it comes to jobs and as far as for the economy on our reservation it's very very tough because where i grew up i would have to say it's about 35 to 45 minutes away from the nearest town and the nearest town only has a school housing a post office a gas station and a grocery store so if you wanted to go to work those are your pretty much your only options that you have and there's a lot of times there's a lot of people that live there and there's a lot of people that work there as well as you can work in the construction or the medical field as well but if you want to work construction in the medical field you're going to have to commute pretty far distance to be able to get to your job so that's something that's kind of very tough and a reality that our tribe faces is there's not a lot of jobs out there you know you have somebody who's been working that job either their whole lives or unfortunately they get fired or they retire and that's pretty much the only time a job opening is going to open up and if you were to open up a new store open up a new hospital or something uh delcon recently opened up a new hospital so thank you you know for that for those job opportunities but it's honestly very hard to try to find something out there that you know that you want to do a career and a job that you'll be happy with and i know a lot of people out there on the reservations don't want to work at a gas station their whole lives you know some of you do good job you know if you're happy with that go for it you know but there's a lot of us out there that have dreams like me who wanted to do more with my life. And that's where I went into the solar industry. Uh, my auntie is a whole reason why I got into the renewable energy in the first place. And uh, she's kind of a been she's been a been uh, bleh, 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 bleh. she's been a big activist as far as for when it comes to renewable energy and protecting the earth and saving the earth for as long as I can remember and she pointed me into a direction of a tribal solar program internship over in denver colorado to where we would travel to different tribes and to be able to learn how to do solar and learn how to meet all these other different tribes and all my travels i went to the chippewa Cree, lakota tribe the pueblo navajo hopi and even some tribes over in california and with all these tribes that i went to we all kind of had that same struggle of trying to navigate and figure out how to live in the modern world but still be traditional now i'm not saying it's not possible i'm just saying it's harder because when you're living on the reservation it's like how i said your puzzle piece fits in there now when you when you take that puzzle piece out and put it into a new puzzle piece you'll have to shape it a little bit different to be able to find its certain piece to be able to fit in the art piece. And even then, when you put it in there, it's not gonna match or look good with the rest of the piece that you have. So that's something that when you when you really kind of think about it, you know, it's, it's a struggle to be able to have that different mindset when you go from the city to the modern day. And for a lot of you out there, different tribes and other indigenous people that are out there, you know it's it's it, let me know your struggles let me know what you're going through with that 
you know, whenever I see a native person in the city, you know, my heart gets happy. You know, I saw a guy at QT the other day. He's like, where are you from? I was like, oh, I'm from Force Lake. What about you? He's just like, oh, I'm from Crown Point. You know, he had his uh, uh, necklace on and it really made me happy to be able to, you know, see like, hey, it's a relative, you know, hey, it's a fellow native out here. And, uh, and I can only imagine what he's going through trying to adapt to these certain times and these ways that are out here because it's hard when you don't have somebody in your family as far as for what I've heard from people is their mother and their father aren't traditional. They don't they don't speak the language or they don't know the songs or they don't have access to be able to learn that. But the young ones want to learn it. The young ones want to learn where they come from and their traditions. And there's a lot of indigenous people in the cities that are born here who never even really experienced a reservation life. They would go out there for a little bit and come back with their with their ideas of what happened out there. But to be able to live out there and come back and forth, you know, is kind of a it's a blessing to have that a lot of people don't have that luxury. So to be able to see like native people on the streets here, not on the streets, but you know, you know what I mean, seeing them in public here in the city and then seeing them on television and YouTube and all these different things. It's awesome to be able to see that same energy spurt that I had when I saw that native person at the gas station. It's cool to see them on movies, you know. Uh, I'll be doing a movie review on Echo and then that new What If Marvel series so that's also indigenous based as well. So I'll be doing those as well. So I'm excited for those. But to be able to see our native people kind of starting to thrive in the modern day, but still trying to be traditional with it. Reservation Dogs is another great example of, of younger generations trying to find their connection with traditional ways, but also living in the modern day. And I think that's the biggest struggle is, and I have to thank technology for this now, is what's everybody else's mindset at? What's everybody else's, you know, where, where, how are my other indigenous brothers and sisters doing out there in the world? How are they coping and finding and navigating their ways through here? So one thing that I try to do is I always have my songs that I have from my grandparents and my uncle that he recently gave me of traditional songs that he sang. Some songs about mountain songs and these other protection songs as well. And those mountain songs you sing when you go on, onto the road and it gives you protection on your journeys and everything. And then also all these bear songs that give you protection as well when you go on your everyday life. Singing those songs, honestly, trying to learn those songs gives me energy that i had when i had when i was in the reservation and it's it's beautiful you know to be able to have that in your heart to be able to have that around you you know i'm not fluent in the navajo language at by far you know and that's something that i'm working on this is my struggles that i'm going through is trying to learn the language as much as i can you know starting out with the songs learning the language and uh through the songs as well going to ceremonies again and that's that's something that i encourage everybody is try to find that one relative that knows the language try to find that one relative that knows some songs even if it's one or two songs you know try to pick it up youtube is something that's also really good now because they have a lot of traditional songs from different tribes try to pick up those songs you know they're, they're all really good songs they all give good blessings and good prayers that way and just always be in prayer that's the biggest thing i can try to say and have is always have a prayer you know, when you pray in the morning, pray during the day, pray in the evening, you know, to be safe because you're not in your homeland. You're not where you are originally supposed to be. And, you know, there's a lot of dangers that are out there when it comes to spirituality and, you know, other different people and their mindsets when it comes to being in the city. So always be blessed, always be protected when it comes to being being in that way. So always be reverent, always be grateful and recognize the beautiful things in the jungle of concrete. And always try to be happy out there, everybody. But that right there is some of the things I wanted to kind of bring to the forefront is the struggles that us indigenous people are facing on the everyday basis, even in the modern day to try to assimilate and blend in with all the modern day technologies and methodologies and mindsets out there. So stay strong out there, everybody. And let me know down in the comments for everybody out there. Let me know how your feelings are on how your adaption is going to the modern day or if you live on the city, you know, or in the reservations, because, you know, that's something that I'm curious to learn about. So that's going to be it for me, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, share and subscribe my, to my Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for enjoying my content. Like I said, there's going to be more movie reviews coming out. 
And yeah, so I'll be doing some paranormal videos as well. You know, I've had some questions in the comments section regarding the skinwalkers and all these other different things. And, you know, I've kind of decided to be able to start answering those questions for you guys. So you guys twisted my arm and I'll go ahead and do it for you guys. But yeah, excuse me. It'll be a lot of fun. So thank you guys so much for watching again. And I'll see you in the next one. I'll go on there. smoke after this not turning anything off keeping it on oh that was a good one too fuck i think i took out the sd card too soon that is unfortunate take two here we go oh not a everybody <laughs> that was take two praying this goes good